Tonight's video, I'm going to try to make short, but this is a complicated topic, so I may have to revisit it again later. And as always, if you have a better idea on how to explain this or how to adjust for curve, then please let me know. I'm still learning also. But I wanted to try to get something out there to help anyone who might be struggling with this curf issue. So if you probably never heard of the word curf until you got a Glowforge, and now everyone in the forum is like, Curf, curf, curf. <laughs> so this is my definition that helps me understand what curf is and why it's important to think about when you're making cuts, especially ones that you are trying to fit together pieces, such as like when you're making tabs and slots, like for a box or something that you need to fit together without maybe having to use glue. Um, so curf is the material loss due to the width of the laser beam or whatever cutting utensil you're using. And that's basically because the laser beam creates a path in your material, you're going to have that loss there. And the best way I can show this visually is to use my eraser here. And if this ra eraser represents the laser beam and you're going to make a square out of your material, then all of this white area represents your material loss because of your cutting tool. So obviously if you were trying to fit these pieces together, you have all this wiggle room left and you're going to want to make adjustments to the size of your piece so that they fit together better. So let's get started. The first thing I like to do is create a one inch box. And again, the best way to get a perfect measurement is to go to your transform panel, click on the double ended arrow, and there you can type in the exact width and height that you want. And for curf, it's important that for your curf test, you use the same material that you're going to use in your final product. So it's okay to use a scrap piece that you have on hand, as long as it's the same material that you're gonna make your final design out of because it is material dependent. So once I have this box that's one inch by one inch, I'll go file, save as, and save it as curve test. And make sure you save it as an SVG so that we can cut the file. And I'm going to skip through the part of cutting it on my Glowforge and go ahead and jump over to pieces that I've cut to help demonstrate why curve is important to think about. For this next part, go ahead and grab your calipers, something to write on, and something to write with. There's going to be a little bit of math involved. This is my 1 inch by 1 inch square that I cut out on the Glowforge, and what I want to do is take the measurement using my calipers. Make sure that your calipers are on zero when it's all the way close. Go ahead and stick your piece in there and give it a pretty good squeeze to compress the wood. Make sure you get an accurate reading. So this is actually reading at 0.992. So remember that we told it to cut one inch, but because of kerf, it actually measures 0.992. So I went ahead and wrote this down. What we wanted was one inch. What we have is 0.992, and the difference there is 0 0.008 inches. Also, at this point, you want to measure the width this way. Um, even if your wood is labeled as quarter inch or eighth of an inch, it's always important to take an accurate measurement of the true value there. So I get 0.215. So I'm going to show you what it looks like if you try to fit your piece that you cut in a slot that uses the actual measurement. So if you didn't make any adjustment for curve, this is 1 inch by 0.215. And if this is the function that you're going for, then fine. These measurements without a curve adjustment would work perfectly for you. But if you're looking for something that's actually going to stick and not have any wiggle room, then you're definitely going to want to make a curve adjustment there. 
Okay, back in Silhouette Studio, I've copied over our measurements, our kerf adjustment again, 0 0.008 inches, and our material thickness, 0.215. So what do we do with this information? Uh, this is going to be a very simple demonstration for this video. So I have a Christmas tree here, and I want to create a slot on a base so that I can put my Christmas tree in the slot, and it will stand up on its own. The easiest way that I've found that I like to do it is to simply zoom in and then move my Christmas tree down into my slot box. Then I'm going to adjust the edges of my box so that it aligns perfectly with the edges of my Christmas tree base. This just makes sense to me because physically once the items are cut, the Christmas tree is going to be fitting in the box that way. So the Next measurement I want to think about is this one here, and this will be our material thickness. So if you think about it in 3D terms, once your Christmas tree goes in there, the thickness of the Christmas tree is going to be this line. So we know that our thickness is 0.215 inches, but with our kerf adjustment it will be minus 0 0.008, which leaves us with 0 0.207. Um, so to adjust that again, you can go over here to your transform panel on the right hand corner or also there's this quick access on the top toolbar here. So we want to change our 0.360 to 0.207 and press enter to lock that in. So that adjustment has been made. Now I'll go back to this measurement here and that was the exact measurement of the base of our Christmas tree but we haven't adjusted for kerf yet. So you're also gonna to want to subtract 0 0.008 from that. And that will leave us with 0 0.608 and press enter. And I always like to double check just to make sure that all of the changes have been accepted and my numbers are now correct. So now I also want to recenter my slot in my box so you can do that by simply selecting both of your boxes and clicking this crosshairs up here and that will center your slot in the middle of your base. Okay and now I will show you what that looks like with the materials that I cut out and how the slot looks with the kerf adjustment. So here are my slots with the kerf adjustment. I'll show you again what our original was without an adjustment. Pretty, pretty easy just to push that one right through. So if you had your Christmas tree, it's in danger of sinking into the ground there. Now this slot here is 0.992 and 0.207 with our kerf adjustments. And if you were to stick your Christmas tree in this slot, is not really wiggling that much and it is much harder to push through an object that you want to stand up like that it is perfectly fine uh, this is not going to fall through it's standing up on its own but again there is some tolerance there of uh, two thousandths of an inch is not really that much of a difference so if you wanted to make it just a little bit tighter and maybe if I needed something that I wanted to stay together without the use of glue I'd want to go even tighter tolerances down to this measurement. I hope this video has been helpful and not too confusing. The good news is that once you figure out what your kerf adjustment number is while you're using that material you won't have to calculate it again so keep that number somewhere safe and i want to give a quick shout out to mike m for using my referral code when purchasing his glowforge and if you're interested in buying one too check out my referral link in the description and also thank you to everyone i've passed 100 subscribers and never thought that would happen when i started doing this all those people who have reached out to me on Instagram after finding my YouTube or just messaging me saying how much my videos have helped. Uh, thank you so much for giving me that feedback. It really helps me going and I appreciate it. So let me know in the comments what you thought and any ideas for future videos. Thanks!